Sherman Lake over here is named for my father. You know, because my sister-in-law gets me. It's probably Uh huh. So there are a lot of Shermans in this area. Uh, yeah, but three, three or more different groups, but not related. Well, why don't we start right from the beginning? Where'd you grow up? Newcastle, up the road about a mile. South Newcastle, really. Uh-huh. Over, over by where the station is? Where the station used the to be. Station. My father was the agent there for many years. Uh-huh. Until they ceased operation. But his brother, Charles, was an agent up to uh, down Scott Mills. He stayed with them and went to uh, Richmond or uh, Bodenham, I think. He retired. He took an early retirement. He'd been sick a while. And so that's that's the house that you grew up in, the one that uh, is owned by uh, Francis Mr. Cunningham. Francis Cunningham. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah, Carpenter built this house in the area of 1910. And I understand the same car that went out and built the house for my father. Uh -huh. And so you go, you went to school right there in, was there a one-room schoolhouse? Or that's what? right, that's where Shirley. Mrs. Yeah, Shelley lives, Mrs. Lund. Mm -hmm. She retired, she and husband retired from uh, Reading, I think, somewhere down there. Reading, Wakefield. They knew relatives of mine down there. And did you walk to school? Oh yeah, we gosh, we could about five times as far as to the road. About five, a little farther than this up their house. That's why we went to a grade school because we went to Lincoln Academy, and went on the train. What was the name of uh, the, the grammar school? Uh, we went up to Edison School briefly, but that's the one up to oh, where that. Colby uh, used kind oh, really? little store, but the used oh, to school there, and yeah. that was moved down the road yeah. a little ways. That was family planning for a while. Yeah. Yeah, that little red schoolhouse, and the real estate agency was in there too, and then they sold the whole building. That could be. They moved it. Yeah. Yeah. But wasn't it called? Paul and I H went school? to school in the horse and buggy a while, up to Damscore before I could get a driver's license. So that was one grades one to eight in that school. That little school just up the road a while. Yeah. I mean the Beach Hill School. Yeah. Okay, that's what it's called, Beach Hill. School. That's Shirley's. House. Shirley's. Yeah, and that's not the little red schoolhouse no. you're talking about. No. It used to be a schoolhouse. But Shirley's, yeah. Yeah. But the one you went to was it just one teacher there. Yeah. Must have been a number of stories that came out of there. Tell them who your teacher was. My aunt, my father's youngest sister, most of the time. Now, did they give her any trouble? I don't recall. You Tell them about the fire at the, at the school. When the fire well, that was uh, long after we got through. Yeah, well, no, when when um, Jake helped put out the fire. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, that's right, too. Well, Cod Cole was in the planning stages then. And they had some equipment come to the South Duke Castle Station. The bridge at which Cassidy wouldn't handle that heavy traffic. They had a big steam shovel on, on wheels. And they had to, uh, well, timber the road. Because it was sinking the dirt road. And, uh, of course, they coal fired. And they fired it up in good shape to go up the hill by the schoolhouse. We kids were inside. And the sparks flew out of the thing onto the wooden shingles and set the schoolhouse on fire. Oh. <laughs> so they came and told us kid to get out in a hurry. And they went and got a bucket of cold water, I mean, boiling water on the steam shovel. And, and there's a big wood pile against the building, so one of the guys got up there and picked up one of the kids and threw it up on to put the fire out, but the hot water came down and pretty near scalded him pretty bad. That was Jake Smith. 
Yeah. Whose parents own the Hatches house yeah. right now. Yeah. Now, did you have to do duties there at the school? Like, uh, was it a wood stove there? It was a wood stove, yes. And uh, it was a small, well, there are two entryways. One is normally used when the kids put the hats and coats and so forth. And uh, the other ones, rarely, because they kept just a small amount of firewood in there and brooms and shovels, uh, shovel saw. And there's a bigger building out back where they put more wood. And also the bathroom facilities were out there, such as they were. The privy? Yeah. How so um, many seats? Huh? How many holes? Well, I never counted one side. <laughs> <laughs> so they had the boys and the girls' side, eh? Oh, yeah. yeah. Was there one door or were there two doors in that schoolhouse, front doors? Two. Two. Where were they both on the front? Yep. Hmm. And so that brought you up to what grade? Eighth, then you went Lincoln. Uh, you wrote, what What year was that when you started Lincoln? Well, I finished in 29, so it was a four-year course. I don't know that I know how to figure the rest of it. 25, 1925? Yeah, I guess so. Uh -huh. My brother's two years later. My sister's <coughs> about eight years later, I guess. And you rode the train in? I rode the train part-time, went to horse and buggy part-time, and uh, then the last of it, I had a car, star car. But you went every day. No, you oh, yeah. You didn't. Were there any boarding students over there at that time? Well, there used to be a lot of them then. Uh, they got a bit, a lot of people took in the borders. There were two, there's some from Booth Bay Harbor. Well, I remember. You remember Emily Smith? Jake's wife. Right. Yeah, she was one of them. And the sister was. How long did it take to take a horse and buggy from here? Oh, we had a fast one. She'd go almost fast as a car. Do you remember how long it took? Oh, I don't recall. Fifteen minutes, maybe. Oh, wow. she'd go like a bullet. But she wasn't worth a dime to hitch her onto a plow. We all have our purpose. Huh, yeah. 15 minutes. Now, the road wasn't the way it is now over to Newcastle. To well, of course, there's been improvements and but shortcuts. Uh-huh. But yeah. the road by Sherman Lake, was that there at that point? Or? Uh, there was a bridge there then. Uh -huh. The Sherman Lake went in the area of 1930. A mail carrier named it. He used Tell to him. deliver mail here. Mel Mason. Tell Art about the uh, the horses on the road during mud season. Oh, he had three driving horses. And, uh, of course, he'd rotate them. And he used these horses in the snow and mud season. And I think he probably had the first called snowmobile, which was made out of a Model T Ford, and the front wheels took it off and runners put on, and the rear uh, there was an extra set of wheels put on, different type wheels, and the caterpillar tread over four wheels, two on each side. Mm. But he didn't use that much. He had more trouble with it. But it was designed for that purpose. But he took good care of his horses. Didn't the horses get stuck in the mud on the road? Well, they never got stuck. What about the horses when they were building Route 1? Oh, those buggers. <laughs> oh, they, they were abused. Yeah. They were big horses. But they did the job hauling the one-horse tip carts 
down the... So, you, everyone out here was farming at that point, or...? Oh, gosh, no. No? I think my grandfather was. Well, some, most of them were, I guess, but not all. I think the superintendent of schools lived next door here quite a while. Well, so name Cummins. And so what did you do for entertainment when you were a kid? You used to have a lot of dances around. Where'd you go for dances? Oh, they'd have them whisk acid and they had them placed down on uh, near the Congo Church in uh, Edgecombe. Broadview, when did they have the Broadview Dance Hall? I remember that back in the 60s, but how long had it been there? Well, of course, I was in Augusta then. My knowledge of activities down here is somewhat limited. Uh -huh. But it was an egg farm before. It was Smith well, Smith? It, the original, as I remember, Woodsmith, he used to deal in wood. And he had a woodlot over by Sherman Lake and other places and uh, hired people to cut the wood. Uh -huh. uh, but his son took over the farm and had the work horses. And he'd borrow his, father, his son's horses and haul wood home and then saw it up. And incidentally, Woodsmith bought, uh, I think it's a packet car but he never could drive it. So he had to get Edgar, his son, to drive it, the one who lived in the other extended house. But of course, Edgar always took his wife with him. She sat in the front seat, and Woodbury had to sit in the back. He didn't like that, so he got rid of the car in a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me a little bit more about these dances. What, was that on, what, a Friday, Saturday night, or? I don't remember. My brother used to play. That. I don't know. He played the violin at that time. And uh, oh, they had these square dances, and waltzes, and Lady of the Lake, and all those square dances. More older people went than younger. And what 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 about uh, did you uh, did you Go up and down the river a bit with the with in boats, or is that part of your? Well, there wasn't so much boating then. There was a lot of smelt fishing. Uh -huh. The rivers used to freeze a lot more than they do now. And incidentally, when I was in the military, in the barracks, I got talking to the neighbor next bunk, next bunk, and he worked in the Fulton Fish Market in New York. He named more people around down with Scott Mills than I knew. <laughs> and he named a lot from right here in the, on this river. Because they were bringing fish down to him? Yeah, shipping them down. At that time, the uh, grocery stores uh, got most of their deliveries in wooden boxes. And the uh, fishermen would get those boxes out. They'd disguise it, but the grocery stores would burn them. So uh, they'd shape them to hold the smelts and then ship them to Fulton Market. Was there, a, there was a brickyard on the island, right? On Cunningham Island? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Island? Yeah, I think so. There are bricks all over the place. Yeah, broken bricks. Yeah, they're up in the yeah. high water. Yeah. Where do they all come from? Oh, well, we used to make bricks. Not there, though. Yeah, right there. Oh, they did make them on the island. Yeah, I think the place down over the hill from, uh, uh, I was going to say Byron's, it was Byron's. Mary's? Down over the hill from Ann's. The Army's. The Army's. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. It's on there. Huh. So after Lincoln Academy, you went into the service? Uh, several years later. Uh-huh. Yeah. And in between, what, what did you do? 
I think I drove a dump truck. You built a dump truck? I drove. drove. Uh-huh. <laughs> <coughs> but I but I went C M P in the in uh, I applied in Augusta while Mason was under construction. And I got a letter two weeks later <coughs> from Augusta. From a guy who eventually would be my boss, but uh, he offered me a job in well, it says it may be a job in Lewiston. We were just starting up an old plant, also a steam plant. And he says, you may be a good job. Of course, that's a sure thing. When the boss calls out and tells him he's sending the fellow over. Well, I worked there two weeks. Then they got drafted for jury duty. He didn't wish that. But that's all right. I didn't hurt any. It probably helped. What was the case? Oh, God, I got that one. Two, two or three. Ah. Oh. Okay. Now, we're talking, you're, this is the Depression, isn't it? 1930s, right? Just after. Well, it was the, uh, this was in the area of 1940. Well, I went to service in 42. Oh, you went to service in 42. Yeah. And when I came back, of course, the job in Lewiston, that old steam plant wasn't, but I could have a job in Lewiston if I wanted it. But I applied to him back in Augusta and said I wanted a job either in uh, Mason or right there in the office. And he, I preferred the office. I know it'd be a little slower working up, but I'm glad I did because uh, well, I got started making budgets and uh, all that stuff. And then they had a strike, and I overruled a lot of people. <laughs> well, one of the bosses, Tony's boss, I knew, I knew the strikers well, all over the system. And I knew the engineers who were replacements. So that's a plus. So, uh, they had to the strike, and the engineers were going to run the stations. And this boss uh, said they had to travel one way on their own time, get mileage only one way. And I said, the engineer mentioned to me, and I said, no, sir, you'll get time both ways, and mileage both ways. Make out your time accordingly, and I'll sign it. Well, I was bluffing. I didn't have any authority. But by golly, uh, <laughs> after after all the words, I got a thousand dollar increase. So, t where where were you in the service? Uh, mostly Richmond, Virginia, but down Huntsville, Texas. That's the place where they uh, execute a lot of people. Execute a lot of people? Well, the p big prison down there. But I was in Richmond, Virginia most of the time, then uh, Georgia and the Carolinas. So this was during the war? Yeah. Yeah. And I, you were in the Army or? In the Army. Mm -hmm. That was before the, the Air Force was separated. And what, what was your job? <laughs> well, going back to Lincoln Academy, I chose to take typing. The principal says it'll never do you any good unless you take shorthand. Shortly after we arrived in Richmond, they pulled six of us out to go to work. Most went to, on basic training. Well, there were three lawyers in civilian life, and a CPA, and two of us guys said we could type. Of course, I sat inside the steam-heated building, typing, Patience is coming in, and uh, of course my wrists are awful lame for two or three weeks, but I made it all right. And then I got doing medical work and giving shots and 
helping doctors, even helping delivery of a baby once. So you, when you moved, you were working for CMP? After I came yeah, back yeah. in Augusta. And, and so you lived up in Augusta? Oh, sure. Yeah. Whereabouts in Augusta? Uh, Patterson Street. You know where that is? No. Well, you know where the Hussey Highway used to be? Oh, yeah. Well, just beyond that, up, up on the right. One block, yeah. Yeah. Is that the Waterfield Road? Uh, yeah, yeah. That, but, well, it's Bangor Street at that point. Well, Roger, you said there weren't a lot of farmers around here. What did the armies do with that big pasture? What did your uncle? Yeah, I mean, well, that was Byron. Yeah, Byron Mary. What did he do with that field? Oh, he, Byron uh, was quite an operator. He, uh, among other things, well, he kept a horse and a cow. <laughs> but uh, like most everybody did then. And but he uh, was. Work with land developers over around Yarmouth and Falmouth somewhere. But he also, around Christmas time, go up to Vermont, cut Christmas trees. I guess there's more trees up there than around here. And then load them onto railroad cars and take them to New York and sell them. And then he'd come back, and this is kind of interesting or funny, because his wife would stay home and uh, take care of the horse and cow. And one year Irvin went too, I guess maybe more than once, Irvin's the youngest son. And uh, they'd get off the train, walk down the railroad tracks, and then come up the island road. And we noticed one time uh, Byron, Irving went right along into the house, but Byron went in to see how his horse and cow were doing before he went in to see his wife. <laughs> <laughs> well, was that land from where the tracks are down to the island, was that all woods? Or was that pasture? There was a field there. A field? Yeah. And how much, how much wood was on the island? Someone told me it was mostly pasture. Well, I think it was from your house. The Cunningham side. Uh -huh. There's a lot of open field, and you, you know you've got a big good gravel pit down there too. Yeah, I know. Lots of people know about it, but no one's getting it. <laughs> um, and they used to harvest the sea hay, the sea grasses. Uh, the only one that I well, this is part of that island belonged to this place. Mm -hmm. And my grandfather used to take the one horse, one machine, and down. And Mo, there was a small barn there too, about the biggest, this room, maybe taller. Where was that? Just off the road. Oh. I think there's probably some stones there, maybe still there. Mm. And he, he'd mow until around noon time, or after I think he took a bucket of, uh, some grain buckets for the horses. And at the lunch for himself. Then a day or two later, he'd get down with a, another horse and a, and a rake. And after he'd been gone a while, Uncle Willie would come down with the other horse and a hay rack. Wow. And he'd pick up Paul and I. And we'd go down and uh, harvest hay and put it in that old barn, except bring the last load up. And, take down the field here. How did the horses walk through that marsh? Uh, they had the big shoes. Did you ever see any? No. You, you've seen them? Oh, yeah, I have. Are they out here? Yeah. In the barn? Yeah. I'll show them to her sometime. Yeah. Now, you had how, how many children did you have? Just the one. Uh-huh. When, when did you get married? Well, I won't ask you when. Who'd you marry? <laughs> Melita McKay. Okay. On June 7, 1947, in Malden, Massachusetts, at the Pleasant Street Methodist Church. 
So you went out of state to find a bride? Well, I was down there a lot anyway. Uh -huh. I had an uncle that worked in a furniture store in uh, in Malden. But he lived in Wakefield and we'd, uh, I was down there a lot. He used to come up here on his vacation. And I got well acquainted, probably as well acquainted with him as I did with my father. As a result, I stopped there a lot, even when I was on military leave. I didn't have time to come up here because the trains were slow from Boston up at that time. So I often stayed at his place. And so you knew him as well as you knew his daughter before you uh, got attached to his daughter? Not his daughter, no, no, no. I, but this is my uncle. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I and he's, he's buried over here next to my father, uh, next to my wife now. How'd you meet Merle? Peggy Griggs? Really? Well, I'm not sure. Let me see now. Well, I guess another friend I used to know. Yeah, was that Peggy Griggs? No, no. Oh, what was her name? Oh, Blanche McKinney. Oh, okay. She, father lived on your place. Really? Yeah, and she owns the uh, lot up on the hill beyond the uh, church, beyond the lawns. There's a gravel pit there, right? Yeah, it used to be. Yeah, she owns that, and she, as far as I know, still owns the uh, place in the sheep that the father had. Mm -hmm. All of the buildings are all gone. Yeah. And so, she, she was in Walden? Huh? Where was she? She was in Massachusetts, and she introduced you to Merle? Yeah, Malden. In Walden. Yeah, they went to school together in Boston, Fishers. Mm -hmm. But Blanche was his girlfriend first. Yeah. <laughs> so when did you move back here? From, from Augusta? Yeah. Uh, June? When was it? In 88, wasn't it? 1980. I had, I had him replaced in 89. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 1988. Yeah. And that was after you retired from from work at, or at CMP? Yeah. yeah. Uh, at my, uh, well, I didn't have any hip. You hear it snap when I'm walking. Is that right? Mm -hmm. You want to tell them about uh, Johnny Washington and his donkey? <laughs> Johnny Washington used to live, uh, well, his mother owned the place where Paul is now. Oh, on a point? Oh. And uh, she had a horse and a donkey. She'd ride the horse and Johnny'd ride the donkey. And uh, Sometimes she, uh, John would take the donkey and ride around himself alone. And uh, Byron Merritt sitting in the window saw Johnny coming out here. Well, here comes Johnny on his ass. <laughs> Byron was quite a character, wasn't he? He sure was. Yeah. Anything you want to do, instead of saying you and I better do this, it's say me and you. <laughs> and the Shermans and the Marys had feuds? I guess so. Well, Byron had a brother, Jim. He lived out across the railroad tracks. And he was a seagoing man. But this is your Uncle Jim, too, so you're related to the Marys. Through him. Through Jim, right. Where was the house on the other side of the railroad tracks? Where it is now. Helen's old house? Huh? The little shack? Oh, no, no. I'm on the other road. Oh. 
Oh, oh, oh. Oh, okay. Well, Jim Hudson owns it now. Okay, yeah. Jim Hudson. And Uncle Jim <laughs> bought that house in Wiscasset and he scouted it up to the cove. Wow. And uh, then a couple of old horses, his son-in-law gave him. He timbered it up to the road, across the field, it's all open field then, and uh, put it on a foundation up there. Now, did they do the same thing coming up out of um, Log Cove Road? Did they haul a house up the river and then come up through the marsh by Log Cove? And that's the one. That's the yeah, one? that's the one. Wow, that's, a, that's quite a lot of work. Yeah. I was just walking around through there. I mean, I you know I can see the old logging trail and the old ruts in the ground. Well, of course that field's all grown up now. Yeah, but it's still all depressed where the yeah. activity happened. Well, that was good. That was a long, long time ago. Scars take a long time to heal <laughs> out there. That's for sure. Huh? Wow, that's fascinating. Is it a, is it true the true story about um, your father had had a pig? And the Marys took the pig? Or uh, like I think it's the other way around. Byron slaughtered the pig, or cut the throat, but the pig ran away halfway up across the field to Pa's place uh -huh. and dropped. And Byron, Pa hollered Byron and said, the pig's up in the field, come get him. Well, I heard the story goes, he goes, Byron, is this your knife? <laughs> he didn't say anything about the pig. <laughs> So the pig, the knife was still sticking out of it? Yeah, he didn't finish slaughtering. Well, I didn't know about that. <laughs> well, I don't see how it would stay. That's in the book that Edwin Mary wrote. Well, Edwin could stretch things. <laughs> <laughs> Edwin wrote quite a obituary on himself. I'm sure he did. Nobody else could. He's, in his book, he said that um, the Shermans had all these chickens, and they'd come over onto Byron's land, and uh, Byron would put them in this, this handmade sort of like a balloon and shoot them back over to the Sherman. Yeah, Ed, Ed, Edwin could stretch things a lot. He was different than Helen and uh, Irving. Irving used to call them a bunch of damn lies. Yeah, Irving used to fight all the time. They used to come over and go to till my garden for me every spring. And yeah. And Ed was always deaf, yeah. and Irving was always the strong one, so he was always behind holding on to the plow, and Edwin would be on the tractor, and Irving would yell at Edwin to slow down, and Edwin wouldn't hear him, and finally Irving would take a big hunk of really hard sod and hum it right at his head, <laughs> and Edwin would yell at him and says, what are you doing? And he said, I told you to slow down. Well, why didn't you tell me? I would watch the two of them screaming and yelling at each other for hours. I mean, Non-stop screaming. Well, quite a, quite poor Irvin got shot and killed. Yeah, yeah. And then Edwin was 95. And his sister must be close to 100, wherever she is. Lincoln. Lincoln home. You sure? Yep. Who's that? Helen. Helen there. Yeah, I went up to visit her when your mom was there. Oh, she's back there then. She's, yeah. 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 Still dresses like a gypsy, too. <laughs> Mismatched earrings and all sorts of different colors on top of colors. Yeah, she used to come home and straighten the place out when uh, Byron and uh, Irving lived there alone. And the minute she got out, she'd stay three or four days. They'd turn around and change things back where they wanted them. Now, did she always live in that little cottage in the summer and then in the house in the winter? Uh, what was that? No, she was all over the country. Yeah, that's true. I think she was in Alaska a while. Yeah. But she came back after the house. Of course, Byron left the house and everything, uh, including the old barn to Irving. Right. And the space behind that to Edwin and beyond the tracks to Helen. Right. So, <coughs> after Byron died, Irving had the old house torn down, and Paul built a new house for him, a small house. And then Helen came by and lived with him. 
With Ed? No, with Irving. With Irving. But Irving was over across the river, deer hunting, somebody shot right. him. Hmm. Now, Ed was with Alice number one. Yeah. Then, right? Yeah, second wife. But, but first Alice. First Alice. <laughs> and Irving was working for Alice Quinnum at that time, I think, down in Wisconsin. Oh. And she uh, mentioned that she went to school with Edwin when he took time off to teach up North Newcastle. So Edwin came home, told Helen, he says, I don't know what I'd dad tell her. It was about that. Damn fool, let him go down and marry if he does. But he did tell her, by God, that's just what he did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Roger, tell um tell Art about the story of the horses that are are still on Route One now, little working horses. What happened to them when they were building Route One? Well, they auctioned them what left. Those that didn't drown when they got them too close to the water. Mm -hmm. And my father bought one for thirty-seven dollars and a half. Yeah. What they do to the ones that drown? Well, they buried them. Right there on Route 1? Yeah, you ride over horses. Which stretch of Route 1 is that? Well, it's Cod Cove. Oh, okay. The so, very last bit, they had some big, uh, I think the two big trucks, chain drive trucks. One was a Big Mac and the other was a Sterling. That was the next Sterling now. Of course, they don't make chain drive trucks either. So what's the biggest change you've seen in this neighborhood, right, in this area? Well, a lot of the farms have grown up a lot. Not right here, but down the other side of Route 1. The straw farm is... What, who owned the straw farm then? Uh, Wood Smith. Uh -huh. Yeah. And was that a... Oh, that was a dairy farm at that time? Or? Well, I don't know just what... I think it did more wood and then firewood. But the son branched right out into buying and selling cattle. Uh, he had a small truck, and I remember him calling cattle in out. Then he went into the uh, hen business hatchery. And he hired 10 or dozen people. I guess his wife was pretty good at taking care of the paperwork. And uh, he had, uh, well, a big insulated truck and delivered chickens all over New England. That must be where that foundation is now, the chicken barn? Or? The barn's the same. Yeah, the, barn, the old barn is there. But the Broadview Dance Hall is in the building that the Watershed Ceramic Arts is now. Oh, okay. Yeah, they used to have... Uh, mm -hmm. Every weekend. They okay. used to have uh, Friday and Saturday. retired people there, too. Yeah, Mobius was there for a while, yeah. 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 I don't think they use that expression anymore, no. but yeah. No, I guess not. <laughs> no, Gleason had cattle on the island, didn't he? Not I know of. Someone had cattle, because I had to rip out the barn floor and drop it down. But evidently, the cattle used to eat underneath. Well, I think probably the McKenna's did. Oh, okay. They had yeah. cattle? I don't think... he. Gleason had two big Mormon cars, and he had a Model T... Right. Uh, not station wagon, beach wagon they called them then. And he bought that for his hired man. I still got cars out in the woods. Oh yeah. Yeah. Now, um, wh where did Francis and Gertrude come from to wind up being the Cunninghams that are, that had a lot of land for a while? Well, the other half of the Our Island was there. Right, where'd they come from? Bath or? Well, the father, Alex, 
lived up uh, Bangor. He was a superintendent. But I, his wife was down on the island a good part of the time. And she's buried down there in the, on Francis' land. Oh, on Francis's land, in the cemetery near the tracks? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Marcel Cunningham's lived on the island. There was an Elmer, I don't remember him too well. There was a George. I don't remember anything about a wife, but he had three kids. I bet he had a wife. Huh? <laughs> well, probably. But the kid, but the kids was Grace, Ted, and Paul. I guess they were probably uh, oh, twelve, ten, seven, something like that. They went to school when you went to school. Yeah, a while. But no. then he died, uh, his wife died, I guess, upstate somewhere. And they shipped her back on the train. And Uncle Jim took his horse and buggy, a horse and wood and sled, and dragged her out there. I don't know who dug the hole and buried her. But my father figured it too close to the road, and people were running over the end of her grave. Oh. So Pa went and got a great big stone and put it over there, so it made it go around it. This is out here? Yeah. Uh -huh. Near the tracks? Huh? Island Road? Yeah. Same place where Edwin, yeah. Irvin, Edwin, Helen probably will yeah. be. <laughs> now, your brother Paul lives out over the bridge there. No, well, no, he lived just up the road by yeah, a mile. Yeah, I mean, you go down... And yeah, that's right, across the railroad tracks. And I heard a story they used to... The train used to deliver the paper by throwing it up up the hill. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised. I never heard it, but I... Uh-huh. Oh, it'd be quite a job. Go down and get it. No, I, they were able to throw it up all the way up onto the porch. Boy, they had to do a top of I mean, I had to quite an arm. <laughs> Retired pro ball player. Huh. Well, just a story out here. Uh, the, the train used to run pretty regularly, even when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, they had uh, well morning, afternoon, evening. Yep. yep. And your father was a clerk. Yeah, he was the agent there. So when did they take the station down? Yeah. I don't know, but uh, I think Bob Wood bought the station. Tore it down, went and built a place out on Route 1 with the material. Do you think it'll ever come back? No. Uh -huh. Well, didn't they take, didn't they, the train used to stop at the little shack that Ed Mary used to have his junk in. Didn't the train stop there and didn't they spend the night <coughs> in the Johnsons? <coughs> <coughs> Not that I know of. I thought that somebody told me that they spent the night in the Johnson's house, and that used to be a small inn. And then they'd take a carriage to Booth Bay in the morning. Well, I don't know, but back, going back to the station, my father had some driving horses. Kit and Kate, I remember. I don't remember seeing them, but I remember hearing about them. And uh, pe people would uh, come over from Portland, and. My father, they give them those horses to drive. The horses knew the way to Booth Bay. They go like bullets. Yeah, I don't remember them, but I remember older people along the way asked me about them. He also had some work horses, but at least I remember some of them. So you don't think the Johnson's house was any kind of a inn or? Oh, that was a. Uh, over across the railroad tracks originally, and moved over there. Oh. Because the, I think my father had that too. They moved that house? Yeah. There was no, no foundation under it at one time. Huh. What do I mean, the no cellar? Right. Huh. I know my dad used to be <clears throat> work for the main 
Central Railroad, and they painted bridges, railroad bridges. Yeah. And he told me that um, they would stay in houses, and that he remembers staying in a house in this area yeah. <clears throat> when they were working on the bridge. Yeah. The fellow down here in uh, Crossroad spent his whole life on the railroad. He'd live right on the trains, go home weekends. I heard some, some of the kids that went to Lincoln would come down from Whitefield on the narrow gauge, and they'd change over in Wiscasset and come in on the, reg on the regular railroad. Do you know any of them? Or? Well, I, I don't know. I knew it was a walk-up, and I don't know if it was in Jefferson, what town it was in. Know any of the chases from Whitefield? Or? Yeah, but they didn't go to Lincoln. Oh, they did? Norman Chase. Like the Gardner. Right? Uh, oh, I knew him. Belonged to 4-H club at that time. Were you in the 4-H? Yeah, and they took four fellows and four girls up to Eastern States Exposition up in Massachusetts. Yeah, Massachusetts wow. town. It's a nice trip. We stayed a week. Yeah. And I was there during the time that Governor Brewster was the governor. And he had two kids and they went to. They were devils. Yeah, a little you younger than devil there for sure. Yeah. That place is huge, the yeah. big big E they call it now. There's a girl went the only one I remember what's her name? Harrington. Her father <laughs> was a uh, funeral director in the Damascot yeah. area. Yeah. Hmm? Eunice, I believe was the name. Eunice. Yeah. Um, no, no relative. Then I just thought I wasn't good yeah, at no that. Yeah, no relative. No, 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 no. I don't know. The um, did you grow pumpkins or raise a cow or what'd you do in the 4-H? Kept paperwork on a right. non-existent chickens. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> oh, I guess I did some, but that, that was flowered up. <laughs> what did you do when you went down to the eastern states, the, when you went to the Big E? Did you go to all the expositions? Or oh, gosh, yes. I can't remember. That was so long ago. Did they have all the <coughs> carnival stuff then? They had some. Did they? Like the Freiburg Fair, only ten times bigger. Oh, yeah. That's amazing. I've never been, I mean, when I first went with my alpacas, I was in awe that that place is as big as it is. Yeah. And it's absolutely packed from the minute it opens yeah. till the minute it closes. Yeah. Uh. Were you in Grange, too? Were you a Granger? Or? No, I never was. Or any other organizations? Did you take part in it? He was in the Old Timers Club. <laughs> <laughs> CMP. He's probably the oldest one at CMP now, in the old-timers program. Well, the last one I knew was 104, I just died. Yeah. <coughs> wow. Right. He was living alone, too. How old up, up to the last, up, up to the last two weeks or so. How old are you now, Rod? 89. 89. You just had your birthday. Yeah. What'd you do for your birthday? What did it do? Q took you out to dinner. Oh, yeah. And then I took you to, and Lucy took you to Gardner for lunch. Oh, yeah. And to see my mom. Oh, in the yeah. yeah. So basically, <coughs> if you think about it, and all the time, the past 80, 90 years, it hasn't changed much right in here, has it? Not really. That's pretty special. Yep. And there's a lot more farming going on now. I mean, in terms of at least using the land, harvesting the the wood yeah. responsibly, and raising animals, and 
taking care of the fields. Well, my grandfather had uh, a dozen, fifteen cows, power horses. But after he died, I Uncle Willie got rid of the animals and went into chickens. He had, uh, and he had some, but that was down solar. <laughs> and he had, oh, maybe eight or ten buildings for small chickens down here in the field. And he took a silo, which was in the old barn, and cut it in three pieces. Made the chicken house out of that. I helped him saw it or something. I remember that barn. Yeah. Yeah. But then after he got started putting hens in it, it went to pieces. Do you have any other hobbies? As a grown man? Hmm? Do you have any hobbies as a grown man? Or? No, I don't know what I do. It. I like keep up on the news on TV. You like to fish. You used to fish. Yeah. Where'd you go fishing? Old Log Cove. You and Jake used to go to Old Log Cove and put your boat in. Go fishing from there. Well, we used to go smell fishing one time, long before then. We, uh, when there was ice, I had two camps, or Pa had them, and uh, Jake fished in one, and I fished the other in the evening. I think I got home first, and we were staying, Jake was staying me, with me at the house up by Francis's. So uh, we had scales down cellar, and I took mine and weighed them, then took them off, but left the scales set as they were, <laughs> and he, uh, oh, he came in, he had more than I did. Put them on the scales and they balanced just exactly the same. Oh, wow. Then we shipped them to New York. Shipped them to New York? How much were you catching? Oh, I don't remember. Sometimes you'd get 20 pounds, sometimes you'd get 50. Wow. That's what was you no, know, smells. 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 Yeah. Smells. Didn't I tell you I, when I was in the military, I was talking to this guy in the next bunk, and he worked in the Fulton Fish Market. Oh. And he named a lot of people in down Scotland Mills and a few in South Newcastle. He knew. Whiskast it. There used to be people come up and whiskast it and fish at night, and they had a camp there, too. Now, did they, did they fish for alvers back for, then? For what? Alvers. Those little eels. Little eels and the, right in between March, right around March and April. Well, I remember them catching eels at the eel spear. Oh, well, you couldn't catch eels with a spear. They're only about that. Thick. Oh, uh, no, yeah. I don't remember much about those. Oh. Uh, what about alewives? Oh, they used to come up to them and eels. But they come up to Sherman Lake, too, though. Well, yes, some. Um, yeah, they used to come up to, uh, well, the branch that comes up to what they used to call Jenny Bridge. And Uncle Jim used to put a net across at high tide. Yeah. And us kids would go down and help him get them out. And he'd put them in a basket, several baskets and take him up to the place, and, and um, he had a smokehouse down back of the barn. This barn here, or that barn down near Cunningham's? Uh, the one, uh, that barn's gone. It's, it was across the tracks from... Uh, oh, okay. Uh, where Hudson's having the trouble. Okay, yeah. Yeah. But he had, he used to... Uh, have smoke out down back of the barn. Then in the summertime, he had a motorboat that would go down the river. I think he had a camp down on one of the islands. Mm. He'd catch a lot of haddock and cod and all kinds, and bring them back and clean them and give them to all the neighbors. 
did you fish <clears throat> in Sherman Lake? Well, that's the put the dam in, that I didn't get the uh, same kind of fish. Now I guess they get a few fish out, uh, freshwater fish, but we, I, I don't recall ever fishing that. Uh, Roger, explain how uh, Sherman Lake got its name, would you? Well, didn't I before? No. Well, Mel Mason used to be our mail carrier here. Yeah. And he owned some of the marsh up there. And most of the people uh, glad to see the lake, and he was too. But he do said he'd only give it if he could have the privilege of naming it. And that's how I got my father's name, because my father was influential in getting it built anyway. Hmm. He went and lobbied the legislature, right? Yeah. Dad? Yeah. <clears throat> and so they, the way you told me is that they, they would all, um, they all wanted to have it, and then, then um, this one man would hold off and refuse, yeah. and yeah. so finally they allowed him to name it, yeah. and he named it after your father, yeah. Fred Sherman. Yeah. Hmm. Why did they want to make it a lake? I mean, why did they want to? Well, the neighbors around that thought it was too much marsh, and I guess it created something of a smell, too. Oh. The marsh was? I think so. Hmm. Because it's so long. You know, long stretch. Yeah. 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 Like, so what? It's just a road. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. Used to go for a ride on on your uh, grandfather's horses. Yeah, Paul and I used to come down here uh, right after lunch, and my grandfather would be hitching up his horse to cultivate, and Uncle Willard hitch up the other horse to also cultivate. So Uncle Willard, uh, my grandfather, put me on his horse. And Paul would be on the other horse. Well, we horses knew where they were going, but grandfather gave us credit. And he'd give us a dollar apiece after. So Uncle Willie kind of was forced to give Paul a dollar. You used to hay the fields, didn't you? You and Paul at night with the car? Huh? Didn't you and Paul used to hay the fields down here at night? Not this one, the one up by uh, Hudson's. Hudson's, yeah. Yeah. And you used a car? Yeah. Byron say, Charles Clifford, of course, is hard hearing. He'd be visiting. Oh, God damn, some boy's going up there and hitching that old car on one machine there, more till midnight. <laughs> No, this is Charles Clifford tied here, Harry Byron oh. Orton. Oh, oh, okay. Well, next year Paul and I were fixing up an old car so Byron could do the same with his. And then putting Paul and I around, we'd drive the thing and he'd ride the machine. But if we were not around, he'd drive him. <laughs> tractor. And Irvin had to sit on the machine. <laughs> Now, Paul had quite a few cars for a while, didn't he? Well, all those, uh... Corvair. Yeah, Corvairs. They still have any of those? I think they're all gone now. Okay. I think I think Winnie got rid of them. <laughs> I think he had nine. I was going to say, I remember seeing six different ones. Yeah. So I believe it, if he had nine. I don't think he made money on them. Well, it's kind of like collecting an Edsel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Corvair wasn't your uh, primo vehicle. But what was your favorite car of all? Well, I guess I liked Chrysler products at that time. But that's what they had most of the time. Was there one special one that you liked the most? Uh, I don't think I ever had a new one. The last one I had, my uncle's widow had, lived here. 
which was a Dodge, but most of them were Plymouth. I suppose the best one I had was the old so-called executive car, the Plymouth 3, with everything on it. <laughs>